I'm Dr. Jay Calvert and I am a plastic surgeon at the Rock Center in Beverly Hills. And today we're going to talk a bit about the uh, need for rib cartilage reconstruction in secondary rhinoplasty. Rib cartilage is a very useful tool in reconstructing the nose, uh, but it's also misunderstood by the public. Many patients come in to me and they say, well, I don't want a big bulky nose if you're going to use rib cartilage. I use rib cartilage much like I use septum or ear. I just use it as a cartilage donor site so that the grafts that I cut are thin grafts for spreader grafts or lateral curl strut grafts, or I use it as diced cartilage with fascia to make the bridge of the nose uh, with a graft that's a, a construct of two materials, cartilage and fascia. Uh, the concept of carving up a rib and sticking it into the bridge of the nose like a silicone implant uh, that just, I haven't done that in so long that I, I wouldn't know why I would need to do it now. Instead of using the rib cartilage in that manner where it's a big you know, chunk of rib, I will use the rib cartilage to build large uh, reconstructive spreader grafts or septal reconstruction grafts to bring up the bridge of the nose to the right height and then use aesthetically pleasing diced cartilage and fascia grafts over top to make the bridge of the nose while at the same time using rib for calumet strut, lateral curl strut grafts. Um, there are lots of ways that I'll use the rib cartilage, none of which have to do with using a big chunk of rib to make the, the nose, you know, some single unit of cartilage. The many reasons that patients come for secondary rhinoplasty include over resection of the bridge of the nose, a pinched tip, uh, difficulty breathing through the nose, uh, aesthetically, you know, an unpleasing result with uh, a polybeak deformity or a drop tip. Um, there can be problems with uh, the uh, inverted V deformity where you can see the nasal bones from the osteotomies being placed in a poor position. Um, the, you know, the reasons people want secondary rhinoplasty are, are, are pretty numerous, but in the end it's really because they're not happy. The reason that they'll have secondary rhinoplasty and go forward with it is the promise that they can get a better result uh, with the knowledge that there could be further surgery. In my practice, in my hands, the risk of having uh, more surgery is variable depending on the degree of difficulty of the case. However, in general, the uh, risk of somebody who's having a secondary rhinoplasty with me having further surgery averages about 15%. Um, that's a very real number. Considering I do anywhere from 175 to 250 rhinoplasties a year, you know, given whatever year it is, um, that means that people are having more surgery. And that's a real commitment because it means you have to take time out of your life. If you're from out of town or you know, out of the state, you have to you know, come to Beverly Hills, you have to stay here and have surgery yet again. And so it's not for everybody. And that, that's why that discussion of what is really entailed in their operation, you know, what they can expect, and if things don't go well, what are the anticipated problems? The truth is, in 80% of the revision operations that I do in secondary rhinoplasty, it's for the airway. Because they've had difficulty breathing from their primary rhinoplasty, and one of the biggest predictors of post-operative problems with breathing is pre-operative problems breathing. And so that is the most common reason I reoperate. Um, scarring and, you know, I'm not so happy with the way the bridge turned out, things like that. I mean, they do come up, but they are much less frequent than really functional issues. And I address those things, but anybody who does this a fair amount can tell you that, you know, these are not easy operations and the, the understanding of what to expect is really important for the patients to, to feel comfortable going forward.